Good afternoon. My name is Pastor Danny Wells here at Seven Bridges to Recovery. This is our first time doing Seven Bridges Dare to Be Truthful. It's time that someone's got to stand up and make a stand for what is right. There's so much wrong in society today and so much wrong in the world of Christianity. Today I'm going to reveal the truth of what the Word of God says and who we're supposed to be to honor Him, to glorify Him, and to praise Him for everything that we do. In my life I have been tested in many ways. I have been lied upon, I have false accusations, I had slanderous things that's come against me. And then again, I had to make sure that I pray and I stand with the Word of God, that I have no bitterness in me, no hatred, um, that I'm not doing this for any selfish, ambitious reasons or nothing whatsoever. I'm doing this to clear my name and my integrity. I worked for 20 years when I got a federal prison to be a, a pillar in society to be something in this world that means something to me in which I was supposed to serve God, to reach out to the last lost and the least, the homeless, the ones that were stuck in bondage with drugs and alcohol. I wanted to give my life to God to serve and to help others that needed the help. In doing so, it's that it has brought a, a turmoil of things in my life, which even to this day, it scares me to death to know that Christ, Christians are some of the ones that scared me with the lies and the accusations and the gossiping. Yeah, it's true to say that. And I understand the reason why today when you go and minister the gospel of Jesus Christ, many people don't want to hear about Jesus because the way Christians are already acting inside the churches. It's wrong. I'm going to pray now, as I always do, to give honor, honor to God. Father, right now let me decrease in the flesh but increase in your spirit in John 3.30 to activate your word, which is your power. Let your love flow like never before through this message that we send into the world, Father God, to hear the truth. And that we can dare to be truthful today and stand on the truth. Because in John 8, 36, Jesus said himself, But those I've set free are free indeed. And it took the truth to set us free. In John 14, 6, he is the truth and the way in life. And we understand God in the word. There's no other way to you except through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In John 16, 24, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm going to carry on, and I'm going to go in the Bible and read you Matthew 7, 1, which I know by heart. It says, Judge not, be not judged. For with the same judgment you judge, you will be judged with the same measure you will be. We don't have the right to judge each other. That's what the Word of God says. 1 Thessalonians in 4.11 is plainly written also that we mind our own business. We live a quiet life, and we work with our hands. That's the scriptures that God has given us. Then we have Proverbs 4 and 20 through 27. We know that people is not allowed to judge us, but again, we're supposed to judge ourselves. In there, we're making sure that our eyes are seeing what our eyes are supposed to see and our ears hear what it's supposed to hear. Our mouth speaking words of light that's pleasing to God. Our feet walking, we're supposed to be walking and not into evil. Our hands touching the things we should be touching. So again, put yourself in judgment. I've always used that scripture to say, hey, clean up around your own doorstep where you come clean up mine. And that's just not judging. That's just about who we are in the word, knowing who we are by listening to the word and obeying the word. Again, we have in uh, Proverbs 6, 2. We're going to go there real quick. Bear with me. I'm, this is my first time ever doing a podcast. In Proverbs 6, 2, it says, you're snared with the words of your own mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. In other words, we as human beings, we have a bad habit of speaking whatever comes across our minds. We don't stop to think about the words that we speak and could hurt others and including hurt myself. Proverbs 18, 21 said, we got the power of our tongues to be life or death and those who love it eat his fruit. We're supposed to be life speakers, encouragers, motivators. Again, in Proverbs 16, 24 it says, pleasant words like a honeycomb, sweet for the soul and help for the bones. But too many of us just don't pay attention to the Word of God, what it really is and what it's supposed to do in our lives. In Proverbs 7, 24, I'll read you now. Now, therefore, listen to me, my children. Pay attention to my, listen, listen to this. Pay attention to the words of my mouth. Do not let them turn aside to her ways. Do not stray into her path. God's words is the power of life that's given to us today if we take heed to his word. Proverbs 8, 17, right next door, it says, I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. Wow. 
That is amazing. <laughs> then we got Proverbs 8, 34 to 36. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoever finds me, finds life, and obtain favors from the Lord. But he who sins against me, wrongs his own soul, and all those who hate me, hmm, loves death. I'm not doing this to hurt anyone. I'm doing this to share the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the written word, the living word. There's over 774,000 words in this Bible and every one of them's alive. Psalms 18 verse 46 says he lives and that's all that matters. I'll be reading Proverbs 10, 12 now. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sin. Why am I saying all this? Well, we have in the Bible in Galatians 5, 22, the fruits of the spirit and God teaches us daily to operate in the fruits of the spirit. And I'm gonna share them with you. I know by heart, but still I'm going to read it from the Bible. And I can say it in Galatians 5.22. But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. He says in John 15.1 that he's the vine dresser and Jesus is the vine and we're the branches. And as being branches, we're supposed to be producing fruit. And the fruit God is talking about us producing is the fruit of the Spirit. In love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But in society, in the world today, we're dealing with things like false accusations. We're dealing with gossiping, lying, slandering, backbiting. And this is the way Christianity is supposed to be? I don't think so. In my heart, I believe, without a shadow of a doubt, there's many of us out here trying to seek the truth and trying to live in the truth. I understand why people don't want to support me because they, they are scared themselves of what I'll become because I don't compromise when it comes to the Word of God. I don't back down when it comes to the Word of God. The Word of God stands for what it is and what it will always be, which is truth and life. And in my life here lately, in the last, well, the last three years of my life, I have uh, been ridiculed a lot. And uh, uh, I'll go ahead and say false accusations have been given to me. I went to jail for 34 days. And then I had two years to stay inside my house only allowed to go to my doctor's office, couldn't come to church, couldn't come to the properties of Seven Bridges. I was banned from that, all because of false accusation and lies. Um, it would have been nice if the detective would have done his job in the first place before he arrested me and asked me to come in for the interview because I went willingly because I know I've done it wrong. Um, if he'd have come down here and investigated the church, the dormitory where this incident is supposed to happen and it supposed to took place, but never did, it never happened. Because if he walked in the dormitory, he would see 19 other mothers and 46 other children that live in there. So it was impossible. And the second thing was that on December 26 in 2012, the, the female was not even here on the property. Not even here. Oh, but I tried to tell that to the detective. You know what he told me? Put your face in the wall and hands behind your back. Your record says what you are, who you are. So I got locked up for my past. Well, in my eyes, my past, I've been set free from because I've been serving God since I stepped out of federal prison. I've done my time for the things I was accused of doing in, in that time of my life. But doing that, I found my life in Christ Jesus. In solitary confinement, yes, I did. And I've never been the same since. But now that I come out here into this world, after I've done my time, I try to come on the other side of the fence and be a pillar in the community to try to reach out to help people, not to hurt people. Um, but... I even seen many times where it was easier for me to serve God in prison than it is out here. I never knew Christianity was so bad. I never knew people was so bad. And it's scary to know that you're supposed to be talking to a Christian and they turn around and go gossip about you or slander you. I'm far sorry to say this. That's not the fruit that God is asking us to produce. Now, if you're producing the fruit of God, you're producing love and the stuff I just told you about in Galatians 22. But if you're producing gossiping, slandering, backbiting, those are not fruit of God. Who's those fruit of? Satan himself. I told you this is dare to be truthful. I know we're supposed to be born again. I know we're supposed to be operating in love and compassion and sensitivity. I'm not raging, mad at no one. What was done to me was unjust, without a shadow of a doubt. But thanks be to God, he gets the glory because I learned a lot through that two years that I was in prison in my own home. I would, I did. 
I learned and forgave the detective that didn't do his job. It caused me to go to jail for 34 days. I forgave that detective that caused me to go through all the slandering and all the news on Channel 5 and Channel 11, 46, Atlanta Journal, uh, news dailies in New York, the magazines, that uh, Pastor Seven was a predator uh, and all that nasty stuff. Said things about me that was worse than killing somebody. And it's true, which I never would. I'm just saying it's the worst thing you could ever be labeled with in my life, and it was. So, again, if the detective would have done his job in the first place and investigated what they get paid to do to be investigators, um, I don't believe it ever would have happened to me going to jail and then me going on Channel 2, Channel 5, Channel 11, Channel 46, and Atlanta Journal just destroying me with lies and, and false news. Since that's been done, I went to seven different calendar calls and six times on the calendar calls I went, they never could bring it to court. They never could bring it to court. But thanks be to God, on the seventh time, God touched Judge Leonard and showed him out of the seventh time in two years I've been going in there for a calendar call. He told the judge, he told the lawyers, and he told the prosecutors, get your act together or get this man home. And before that day was over, Judge Leonard signed a statement saying the charge has been dropped because it was never was no evidence. And it never happened because there couldn't be no evidence. And then even when I walked out of there, my attorney even said to me, well, you know, you're the first time ever coming out of counter call. You didn't make it to court, so you gotta be careful. I don't want you doing news broadcasts. I don't want you to go to Channel 2 and all this other stuff. And I said, I'll post you just take this and lie down. No, I'm sorry. I have for a while. But a good brother of mine, J.B. Walker, and he had a friend that worked for Channel 2. Channel 2 stepped up to the plate and gave me a chance to spot on TV to prove my innocence and to show my innocence and to reproof what they said about me. We reached out to Channel 5, we reached out to Channel 11, Channel 46, the Leonard Journal Constitution. We have called them, emailed them, texted them, everything you can imagine, asking for help, just so the truth can come forth. I got a mother's notarized letter she's written that's on the website. You can come to sevenbridges.corp.org and you can read it for yourself. We, we do YouTube, Instagram, IG, whatever. Um, but again, the only thing we want to do is have a chance to clear this ministry's name and give its integrity back. I am part of this ministry. I birthed this ministry. I was the founder of this ministry. God put it in my heart to open it, to help the women and children here in the city of Atlanta, to help the men to come out of jails, out of out from under the bridges, to help them get off crack cocaine, heroin, alcoholism, and I teach them Isaiah 58, 6 through 8. That's where the speedy healing, healing comes from. It's to loose the bonds of the wicked, set the press free. Break every yoke, bring the poor, and cast out into your house. Teach them how to serve God so the speedy healing can come to them, and it does. I've seen it work. God's word is a miracle if you put it to work in your lives. It changes you. So I say to you today, I'm not mad. I'm not aggravated by no means. I'm hurt, and believe me, I know love hurts. I feel sorry for Donald Trump, the President of the United States. People, open your eyes. Don't you understand God's in control of every situation, every circumstance of life? You're not controlling nothing. God is. We're little pawns in a chess game that God has us doing whatever he wants us to do. He allowed Donald Trump to go into the White House to be President of the United States of America. That man has done a lot since he's been there. And believe me, I don't know how he accomplished the things he has with all the demons and demonic forces coming against him and, and slandering him and slandering his wife and his children. I feel sorry for the president. I say, won't you act like Christians and back off the slandering, his gossiping, his false accusations? Because if you don't, you see the world's in a mess now. Give the man a chance. I feel his pain. I went through it for two years. And now y'all want to impeach him? Come on, people. Y'all supposed to be Christians. Act like Christians. We all are. Love, compassion. I hope and pray to God that this blesses your heart for whoever's watching, whoever's listening. There'll be more to come. I'm going to sign off now. Always in love through Christ Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Do what you do best, God, because you're best at what you do. Always in John 16, 24, in Jesus' name. Salam.